JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 24th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's mid market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded um, traded mixed against the other major currencies on Wednesday during the Asian session Thursday. It gained versus GBP, Euro and JPY in that order, while it underperformed against AND, CHF and NZD. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, the Canadian dollar. At first glance, the FX performance paints, uh, paints a, a blurry picture with regards to um, uh, with regards to the broader market sentiment, but trying a little more to decode it, we estimate that the weakening of the pound and the euro combined with the relative strength of the franc and the commodity linked uh, currencies at the time when oil prices rose as well, suggests uh, that uh, some concerns with, um, with regards to the war in Ukraine may have kicked back into the markets. Uh, Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that all major European and US indices under our radar uh, were, a sea of, um, uh, were a sea of red, with most of them losing more than 1%, uh, while the negative appetite rolled over into the, Asi the Asian session today. However, we stick, to our guns, uh, uh, we stick to our guns and we prefer to refrain uh, from saying that this is a start uh, of a, oh, this is the start of a large uh, of a large downfall as the technical picture of several indices points to just a corrective setback in uh, a recent price structure of higher highs and higher lows. We still see the case uh, for another rebound despite the war in Ukraine still uh, raging and we explained the reasons for that in yesterday's report. However, we repeat uh, for the upteenth time that we are not calling for a long-lasting recovery. In order to start considering this, we need uh, concrete evidence that the war is over. Now, with regards to yesterday's slide, it may have, be, it, it may have not been fears of further escalation uh, in Ukraine per se. Perhaps uh, some investors decided to take the opportunity and lock some uh, gains made during the recovery of the last uh, days, especially ahead of several meetings between US President Biden and other NATO and European leaders, at which more measures uh, targeting Russia could be decided. It could also be concerned that uh, the further advances in oil prices could lead to even higher inflation despite several banks, uh, central banks beginning uh, to tighten their respective, uh, uh, their respective policies, which consequently could consequently weigh on global economic growth. Oil prices jumped around 5% yesterday due to weather-related disruptions to Russian and Kazakh uh, crude exports via the Caspian Pipeline uh, Consortium Pipeline. Now, as uh, for today's events, uh, the main items on the economic agenda may be the preliminary market PMIs for March. We get the manufacturing services and composite indices from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, and they may provide a first uh, glimpse as to how those major economies have been affected by the war in Ukraine. Expectations are for small declines in all indices, but we see the case for negative surprises as more likely in the, in the EU and the UK indices. Big disappointments could raise questions again as to whether the ECB and the Bank of England could prioritize stopping accelerating inflation instead of supporting economic growth. 
We also have a central bank deciding on monetary policy on Thursday, and this is the SNB. Although inflation in Switzerland is slightly above 2% at 2.2% year over year specifically, the rate is uh, well behind uh, other major economies like the Eurozone, the UK and the US, and thus we don't believe that Swiss policymakers will signal winning willingness to lift interest rates uh, soon. Also with the Euro franc staying in a downtrend mode uh, since uh, January last year, Despite the latest recovery started on March 8th, we believe that officials will maintain extra loose monetary policy, reiterating their willingness to intervene in the FX market if uh, deemed necessary. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.